This podcast contains strong language and adult themes. Listener's discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to A Page Too Far, the show where each week, one of us reads a book and tells the other all about it. Will it be bad? Will it be good? Let's find out! Hello, I am Smokey the Bear. Ooh. And this is my co-host, a gender reveal party. (laughs) (laughs) How you feeling? I feel like I'm ready to burn down half of a state. This week's book is called The Brief and Frightening Reign of Phil. Okay. I'm 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 all in. I am a hundred percent sold. Say no more. The brief and frightening reign of Phil. Is it rain? I have it right here. It is rain. Okay. There appears okay, okay, okay. You, you can't tell a whole lot from the cover, really. No, it's no. It's pretty, pretty plain. Yeah, it looks like there's, I, I, it looks like it's thought bubbles, but it also might be water bubbles. But uh looks like there's kind of like an automaton thing. Um, yeah, there's some random machinery and stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, like a ship's wheel, top of a, a tower. Uh, cranules is the is the word that we were looking for in turning uh turn of the screw oh for the top for the, the top tower, of the tower cranules okay yeah interesting yeah, yeah. If somebody uh, uh faith listener all seeing i sent us that nice um, he just like schools us on everything he does he does <laughs> we appreciate it yeah it looks like a very dr seuss kind of cover the book is written by george saunders in 2005 mm-hmm. it is uh, a satirical comedy i would also classify it as surrealist Ooh, okay. Fiction, yeah. right? Uh, there's a lot of very surrealist elements, but it is very, 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 very satirical. Uh, not very subtle, <laughs> okay. but it's a really enjoyable book. And it is 130 pages long. The The title just sounds like something that I would have written in like a high school essay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, that's the reason I picked it was because of the title. Yeah, that's a good title. Um, it's only 130 pages long, and I was... I, I promised myself, I was like, I'm going to save this and for an emergency when I need a short book in a short amount of time, something I can hammer through in a day. But the curiosity just got the better of me. And I really, really, really wanted to read it. So I mm-hmm. read it. Then I'm glad I read it because I enjoyed it. Nice. So let's dive in. The Brief and Frightening Reign of Phil. This story takes place within two countries mm-hmm. and slightly in a third, but that comes at the end. Inner Horner. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Inner Horner. I hardly know her. And the surrounding outer Horner. Oh, okay. Is it like uh is it like a peanut M M&M? and M? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Except that the the peanut is really tiny. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> you see, inner horner is so small that only one person can occupy it at a time. Oh, you were not joking. The other six residents must stand in the short-term residency zone in Outer Horner waiting for their turn. This really is a Dr. Seuss book. It's very strange. That's hysterical. The Outer Hornerites (laughs) consider the inners whiny and grasping. They're never satisfied with what they have. Because they want want that space. Yeah, they they, they need more space. And they're like, ah, fine, we'll give you this like... This little zone that you can inhabit yeah. until it's your turn. It's the waiting room. But the outer Hornerites consider themselves generous and dignified. Well, of course. How, how, so how do we have a scale of how big outer Horner is? It's like a genuine country. Okay. It's, like, it's okay. like hundreds of kilometers wide. Okay. Right. Uh, it's just this inner Horner that's really tiny. Just, yeah. The, so they, they, man, I wonder if this will go into politics and like how their visas work. Do they oh, have to? There's politics. Okay. Not not logistics, not that type of thing. Sure. But this is all about politics. Okay. <laughs> One day, Inner Horner suddenly became smaller. What? A loud sound of rock scraping against rock is heard. And three quarters of Elmer, the current resident of Inner Horner, was now an Outer Horner. It shrunk so much that he's no longer in yeah. Inner Horner. Just then, Leon, the border guard... He's an outer Hornerite. Okay. The border guard finds Elmer and sounds the alarm. Outer Horner was being invaded. Yep. 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 <laughs> this, this is everything that I hoped it would be. Yes. The outer Horner militia, uh, their names are Frida, Melvin, and Larry. I'm a Larry Stan. 
arrive in a panic. They glare at him, Elmer, mm-hmm. and ask him what he's doing in their country. He tells them that his country shrank. They don't believe him, and he tells them to look for themselves. So they look, and it is indeed shrunk. Huh. After some discussion, they decide to expel Elmer back into his own country. Just get out of here. So they push him back into inner horner, <laughs> but he just pokes out the other side back right. into outer horner. Right, right, yeah. Uh, they say things about him like, that's just like an inner hornerite, always sneaky and up to no good. Yeah, you, you push him out one way and he just comes in the other. He just sneaks back in. Yeah. He's this bastard. You can't stop him. Uh, it also says that Elmer, the only thing he possesses is like this little shovel that he just digs in the dirt with. Aw. And he starts doing that when he's talking to him because he gets nervous. <laughs> that's... It's great. That's adorable. They argue for a while about what to do, and a voice behind them suggests, you should tax them. The voice came from a middle-aged outer hornerite named Phil. Oh. Now, Phil is a really bitter person. Clearly. He has a bit of a history. He fell in love with another outer hornerite called Carol. Aw, Phil and Carol. But uh, the love was not reciprocated. Well... Carol fell in love with a guy named Cal. Cal? Cal? Cal. Cal. C-A-L. Okay. Cal was an inner Hornerite. Oh. He's described as being a can of tuna. Okay. With a belt buckle. Oh. A shiny belt buckle. Nice. I know a vine dragon that would (laughs) love that. Something you should know is that all of the inner and outer Hornerites are composed of flesh, mechanical parts, as well as like shrubbery (laughs) oh they're just randomly composed of these three elements right okay so cal is or looks very much like a big tuna can with a shiny belt buckle and it says a little blue dot but it's not specific about where that's located so that's that's not hyperbole that is no that's what he is what he okay okay that's Um, what we're diving into here and they don't describe all the characters so it's just a couple of them are described so so carol falls in love with cal and this makes phil super bitter he never mm. got over it. Well, yeah. And he just has this hatred for inner Hornerites, right? Mm-hmm. So Phil says, tax them for every day they spend in the short-term residency zone. Right? But, that, that's his solution. But that's the but that's the place you gave to them. Why not tax them for every day they spend outside well, their country? They're, they're not staying within their own country. So obviously they don't give a shit about boundaries. So they need to punish them in some way. So kind of manage them. But you should at least just tax the guy who's invading, not not the other ones who are waiting patiently to invade. The others say, that's a great idea. Of course they do. How much do we tax them? Everything. Phil asks, how much do they have? Mm-hmm. Tax them that shovel. Uh, and then Elmer says, four smolokas. Smolokas. Oh, smolokas just aren't worth what they were. I think the they're smolokas. Yeah, four smolokas. Uh, and Phil says, then tax them four smolokas. So the so they take their money, mm-hmm. all of their money, yeah, just four small locas, and then the bolt holding the rack on which his brain was placed would sometimes fall out. A fill. Oh, did I word that weirdly? A little bit. Let me reword that. So Phil has a rack on his head. Mm-hmm. It's either on his head or it is his head. It's mm-hmm. not clear. And there's a bolt holding that rack on, and that bolt sometimes comes loose and falls out which causes his brain, which is placed on the rack, Mm -hmm. to fall off and land on the ground. Yeah. So this happens. His brain kind of tumbles out onto the ground and rolls into a ditch. And he begins a speech about divine providence and how much better they are than the inner Hornerites. Oh. The others like what he has to say, though. Of course. And they retrieve his brain from the ditch and put it back in his head. That's kind of nice of them. Something it mentions is that if his brain is outside of his, uh, like off the rack for too long, he starts having issues. Like he'll spasm. He won't be saying the right words. He just starts malfunctioning until he shuts down. I see. Well, that would happen with most of us. Yep. And when he was in high school at a swim meet, this happened and he sank to the bottom of the pool Oh. and needed to be resuscitated. And he was in a hospital for three weeks. Wow. Um, But it still happens. It falls out from time to time. Yeah. Get that looked at. So everybody's like, they love him. They're like, you're saying what we feel. Like, you're, you're just saying it out loud, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's um, thinking it, I'm just saying it. Right. I want to avoid drawing obvious parallels to recent political figures. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is satire. 
It, it is satire. This was written in 2005. 2005 satire. And yeah. this is this is just a statement on all politicians. Yeah. A, across the board. This, yeah. That's just what it is. The next day, they try to collect the tax from the inner Hornerites. Yeah. But the four Schmeckles. They well, they don't have any. <laughs> so some Smolux. Uh, Smolokas. Smolokas. They well, they don't have any money anymore. Right, because they took it all. They took all their money. <laughs> yeah. So Phil rebukes the inner Hornerites for being lazy ingrates and not paying their due taxes. Yeah. He's like, what have you been doing all night? Sleeping? You should have been working so you'd have enough money to pay your dues. Yeah, you knew this was coming. Yeah. This is on you. Phil decides they should take whatever natural resources they have as payment. Oh. So first you're going to take their money. Then you're going to take their natural resources. Well, they got to pay. It's the law. It's true. It's, it, you know, <laughs> how, how could I have forgotten? <laughs> I mean, if they broke the law, they'd be criminals. You have to imprison them. So right. So you're trying to help. Them. Yeah, we're we're doing this for you. <laughs> so he asks one of the other guys. He's like, take an inventory of what they have on their, yeah. their property. And uh, Half so a foot. what they have is a small apple tree, a tiny stream, Aww. and three cubic feet of dried, cracked earth. That's too big for Elmer, or too small for Elmer. Elmer can't fit in that. Three cubic feet. Cubic. I mean, that's a, that's a yard by a yard. No, no, no. Because then that would be nine square feet. You are correct. Uh, and 27 cubic feet. So, so three foot- cubic feet. You'd, you'd like squ- get the square root twice. That's too much math. I can't do it. It's like, it's probably less than like a square foot. It's probably like a little tiny area. It's, it's one by one <laughs> by three. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That works. I guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a math guy. I'm not either. <laughs> but okay. I never pretend to be. It's just big enough for a little apple tree, a small stream, and some dirt. I was excellent at math until they added um, numbers. You mean letters? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 I get it. <laughs> I'm crying on the inside. If I'm not reacting much to this, I'm just fascinated by everything that you're saying. It's a very colorful This book is incredible. It is thoroughly entrancing the whole way through. Yeah, I can the, I can see what's happening. Yeah, it's like a modern fairy tale. And I love they it. don't have a clue. They'll fall in love and here's the bottom line. So Phil tells the one of the, the guy who took him inventory. He's like, are three foots down to two? There we go. God damn it. Phil tells the guy who took inventory to uh, seize their resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the guy shovels it all into his mouth and swallows it. As, as one does. Uh, and then the later spits it up somewhere else. Yeah. Wherever Phil told him to put it. Yeah. That night in the short-term residency zone, the inner Hornerites have a frantic meeting to discuss what to do. Yeah. What do? Uh, they're like, you know, we have nothing left to give. What, what, what are they going to do to us now? New country. Who does? The inner Hornerites are different from the outer Hornerites because they're smaller and they do like mathematical <laughs> equations for fun. That's kind of a coincidence. We were just talking about that. We were. Uh, but they just kind of do that for fun. And so the outer Hornerites are like, what fucking wimps. They're little and all they, they just do math all day. Yeah. And they're very passive. They don't really do anything. I mean, Carol didn't think so. I mean, <laughs> there you go. She's attracted to brains, but not the kind that fall into the ground. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Maybe if you'd have kept your brain inside your head. So they're talking about what to do. They argue about which issue should be addressed first. Because some are like, well, first we need to figure out how to get food. Yeah. Because you took our only source of food. Yeah, our apple tree. Uh, we need to get money because they're going to want payment. Yeah. Um, we have to figure out where we're going to go because we can't be in the short-term residency zone forever. Right. So they're like, which which of these uh, issues is more important? Which should we get to first? Maybe food. Uh, I would argue water because he also took their water. Well, that I, I attribute That's water with food. With food, I guess. So, some of them are also talking about we should defend our home. Yeah. Because these guys just took a bunch of shit out of our home. Yeah. Forcefully. We they should rocked do up, something. said, give me your lunch money and left. Yeah, exactly. During this discussion, a spotlight turns on and just illuminates the small patch of land they're on. Oh. Just from a guard tower. Huh. And the guy up there is like, I, Phil told me to do this. Because, like, he was saying we need to keep an eye on those sneaky inner Hornerites. So. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here now. This, I, listen, this is just my job. I don't, I don't want to do it, but they told me to. I don't want to do it, but, you know, it's kind of fun sometimes. Look, I have a Sorry. big light. I have a big light. So eventually they decide they need to write a letter to the president of Outer Horner. Oh, okay. Right. Which is not Phil. 
No, no, he's just a guy. Oh. He has no authority whatsoever. All right. He just showed up and is like, we should do this. And then the border guard were like, yeah, we'll listen to you. Okay. <laughs> but he has no actual authority. Huh. The next day, amid trumpets and fanfare, the president of Outer Horner arrives at the border. Oh. He has five mustaches and seven bellies. And diplomatic immunity. <laughs> yes. Uh, the president is my favorite character in this book. Did you say five mustaches and seven bellies? Yes, that's, that's correct. That's incredible. And he has three spindly legs. Oh, he's a tripod. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, one of the inner Hornerites explains the situation to the president. Yeah. Phil comes walking up with his militia, as he calls them. Yeah. Is, is this the same? The same. The same trio? The same dudes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the. Still Stan Larry. Well, two. Yeah. Two dudes and one lady. It's Frida. Lady. Yeah. And then Melvin and Larry. Yeah. Larry. I stand Larry. Nothing you say will ever make me regret standing Larry. <laughs> Phil tells the president that he did indeed take the tree and stream. Well, yeah, we did. But that he was only enforcing the short-term residency zone tax decree. Yeah. Haven't you heard of it? We made it yesterday. The president, who's very absent-minded well, and old. Yesterday. The president, who's very absent-minded and old, asks the mirror-faced advisor if he had ever made such a decree. Uh, that's important. The, invi- the advisors he has have mirrored faces. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they look, only the subtlety is not the lead. lost. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I should say the subtlety is not there. So the president asks the advisor, yeah, did, did, did we, I did make that decree? And the advisor says, well, sir, it depends on how the tax was received by the people. If the citizens support the tax, then <laughs> yes, I do remember you making the decree. <laughs> but if they don't, then I don't think I would remember you making the decree. If, Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. (laughs) So they poll every resident of Outer Horner. Oh. Which means they polled Phil and his buddies. Yeah. Yeah. And the the guards. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and it came back unanimous. The the tax was a rousing success with the people. Yeah. They didn't pull the inner Hornerites. No, of course not. Why would they? They're not their citizens. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) The advisor says, sir, I've just remembered. You did, in fact, make this decree. Nice. The president admonishes the inner Hornerites for false accusations against Phil and the violation of the law. More like Phil's accusations. I, I can't say that. <laughs> Phil's accusations. More like Phil's accusations. That was a really rough one. I'm Look, not going to lie. It, 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 the joke itself was a stretch and was never going to go well. But then my stuttering over it, man. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. Though. Thank you. Uh, and then the president leaves for the Capitol. There's a really funny part, though, because when the president comes in, he's very absent minded and he's very reminiscent all the time. He's always thinking about his good old, the good old days. Right. Hmm. And he's like, oh, inner Horner, I remember when I was young and I adventured in this land. At that time, there was apple trees and beautiful streams and <laughs> kind of oh. like stuff they took away. Oh. And then he talks about like, oh, there was a, oh. a girl I used to know. And then one of the other residents was like, oh, she died. And then the, like the narrator of the book was like, the president didn't know he was actually standing over where she was buried, where inner Horner used to be. Oh, (laughs) so he's standing over his old girlfriend who's in the ground. It's funny. The next day, Phil and the militia arrive at the border to find all of the inner Hornerites stacked on top of one another. Nice. In a trench coat. (laughs) The teetering pile is about 30 feet high. Holy cow. So... As you probably figured out, they're on their air, their country, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's so small. Yeah. And one is on like one foot and then they're all like stacked 30 feet high. Yeah. In order to make it work. This is incredible. The Outer Hornerites sneer in derision at their uncouth behavior. They're acting like animals. You'd never see Outer Hornerites piling up like that. So you're going to see a pattern of they're forcing them into a position and then blaming them for being in that position. Well, yeah. All, they've the already done way. it. Yeah, no, they keep doing it. Yeah, so this this was not going to stop. There, there's a strong parallel between, um, let's say, a leader perse- persecuting a group of minorities, mm-hmm. or or just a group of people in general of a certain status. I mean, this is how this is how certain countries that we live in, yes. have treated every minority, Basically. especially on the land that they own. Yeah, uh, <laughs> when we were founded created whatever and then once those people are trying to cope with their new situation yeah then we make fun of them and take more they're they're called criminals because what else what the fuck are they supposed to do yeah (laughs) yeah this is yeah makes you feel real good so the pile comes crashing down 
No. And the amount of inner Hornerites inside outer Hornerite is unprecedented. There are at least six guys. Phil sounds the alarm for invasion and the militia surround the inner Hornerites. Phil demands that they return to the temporary zone and pay their tax. But they have nothing with which to pay the tax. Yeah. Again. They spent all night playing Jenga and not actually yeah. working. <laughs> Lazy. Phil orders one of the men to take their clothing as oh. payment. Oh, not the clothing. This is getting rough. As one of the militia grabs one of their shirts, another slaps his hat, saying, Stop! That's enough! Right? Yeah. Just slaps at his hat. Yeah. One of the other militia yells, Leon's under attack! <laughs> and he runs into the temporary zone, tripping and injuring himself in the process. How could they have done this to me? <laughs> exactly. He's uh -huh. bleeding from the head now. Phil's brain drops out again, and he stamps, and he is outraged at the violent response from the inner Hornerites and declares this day Dark, Dark Thursday. Ah. Oh but also Amazing Heroic Thursday in honor of his brave men who were attacked. So it's Dark, Dark, Amazing Heroic Thursday. <laughs> Something like that. But it's a holiday. Yeah. And so he's like, since it's a, a national holiday, we'll forgive the tax this one time. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Later, Phil is walking around um, just a region of his country. I don't, I don't remember what it was like in the South or something. I don't remember. Hmm. When he comes upon a little old woman spreading mud on two huge muscled men. Any thoughts? Uh, no. Okay. I have no thoughts about that whatsoever. Uh, their names are Jimmy and Vance. Oh, I was hoping it'd be, um, uh, what are their names? Thick and thicker? No. Well, yeah, but no. Um, Hans and Franz. Hans and Franz. I like it. <laughs> Uh, they're mud consistency apprentices. Oh. So the way the job works, it's not a job because they don't get paid. Well. It's a, it's a discipleship. Yeah. So you, you just live that way until you, your own guy. Um, but the old woman spreads mud on them okay. to study its consistency. So they are just, they are just, uh, effectively. Brick walls. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, and they're both like, oh, this gig isn't so bad. I mean, eventually we'll do it on our own and we could make money doing it. Yeah. And I mean, this lady's way nicer to us than our ma, who is always insulting us. We're just doing it for the exposure. Yeah. So they're like, this isn't a bad gig. Uh, but Phil talks to him and he hires them to be his bodyguards. Uh, and he's going to pay them one shmaloka each. Oh, wow. That's half of the shmalokas that we've seen in this book. That's right. In addition to a compliment every day. Oh, for each of them. What a, what a guy. Cause that, that was the conditions for, I think it was Vance was like, all right, look, we'll take the job under one condition. I want you to say something nice at least once a day, man. I had a manager who did that no yeah. matter how you did, no matter what you did. Right. At the end of the day, it was always, um, either like, thank you for your help or thank mm -hmm. you for coming in today or, uh, feels you know, something like that. It feels good. And it, it felt weird on the days that I knew, like, yeah, I slacked off today. Mm, yeah, I didn't earn it. You feel disappointed. But, but he would say the same thing every time. So it's like his tone didn't change. Like He never said it sarcastically. He always right. uh, meant it. But, man, that was just, that was really, really weird. That was a very interesting way to kind of put guilt in a situation in, yeah. a, in a dead end job that meant nothing, that the labor didn't actually matter. Yeah, you, you, uh, you feel like you, like you don't want to disappoint him. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. I have to try that. Yeah. I disappointed him a lot. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he and I didn't get along. So this, this to me screams like working conditions in our current economy. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Which is like a company puts out a shit offer, but it's better than whatever else you could find. So you yeah. jump at it. I mean, it's literally what I was just saying. Yeah. The job was a dead end job. The pay wasn't there. Right. But the manager, man, he was nice. Yeah, it goes a long way. You know? Yeah. People don't quit their jobs. They quit their bosses. Uh, the next morning, Phil arrives at the border and orders Jimmy and Vance to collect the inner Hornerite, Hornerite's clothing. What a, what a nice country you got there. It'd be a shame if somebody were to uh, strip you. <laughs> that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem correlated at all. It's <laughs> weird. <laughs> oh, trust me, it works. The pair of bodyguards are too strong to resist. Mm -hmm. They're just big, muscly dudes. Yeah. There's nothing they could do. After the Outer Hornerites have left, 
The inner Hornerites stand in the short-term residency zone naked, Aww. expressing their frustration and debating about what they should do. This is another element to the story, which is like the inner Hornerites seem to be reluctant to do anything. So far, yes. They, they're just arguing about what they should do, but in the end, they are not people of action. Right. Um, they're, they're way too timid and passive. The next day, when it's tax time, Phil is at a loss with how to deal with such rebellious, ungrateful people who openly defy the law. They don't even have clothes to take now. <laughs> he suggests to them that they give him Carol to be his wife. Oh. And he will, in turn, give them 12 smolokas. Wow. For three, that's enough for three whole days. Yeah. What a deal. That's like three-fourths of the smolokas that you owe him at right. this point. Yeah. And he's like, look... I want her. You guys have her. You have nothing else. Give her to me. Yeah, that's it. Why didn't I think of that? In a fit of rage, Cal invades Outer Hornerite and attacks Phil directly. Wow. Knocking his brain out. The nerve. Cal is quickly apprehended by Jimmy and Vance. Yeah. Uh, kind of did a shit job bodyguarding there. A little bit. He got a hit in. Yeah. Phil says that they have no choice. The two hit fight. They must disassemble the invader. Oh, no. Cal cries out to the inner Hornerites to join him in this revolution, but none of them make a move. Of course not. He's about to be disassembled. They don't want to get disassembled. Cal is disassembled. Oh. And his parts taken as payment for the tax. Oh, you hate to see it. And there's, there's a thing where Phil is like, all the unusable parts are just scattered to the corners of this country. Oh. And then he leaves the little blue dot thing just outside the zone as a reminder to them not to do that. It's like, this is a real world example, but it's like William Wallace. Yeah. When he uh, was drawn, quartered, beheaded, and mm -hmm. his parts scattered to the four corners. Exactly. Frida, one of the militia, yeah. is disturbed by this act. And she later has a dream about Phil killing her own daughter. Oh, wow. So she writes a letter to the president informing him of the fact that Phil is disassembling inner Hornerites. Does she have him pass it to the leaders of the parliament? But for now, uh, it's a Hawk Nelson joke. What's Hawk Nelson? I'm going to write a letter. To the, it's a Canadian band that a mutual Never. friend of ours is obsessed with. Never heard of it. I'm going to write a letter to the president and have him pass, into, pass it to the leaders of the parliament. <laughs> it's, uh, it's wasted on has me. The, has the famous line, now instead, Tommy is a crackhead. That sounds sad. It is. Well, it's it's about uh, the state of uh, the education system and how uh, schools are defunding art and mm -hmm. athletic programs that matter and uh, putting them into things that don't matter as much. Right. Gotcha. And removing the opportunities for those people who would have been who would have been. The president gets the letter and then sends a summons to Phil. Hmm. Like I heard about this shit. You better get your ass over here. Yeah. Phil arrives at the palace, the presidential palace, with Jimmy. And Vance. The president is a little bit more scatterbrained than usual, and he immediately forgets why he summoned Phil. All right. I thought Phil was the one with the brain problem. <laughs> well, no, the president had it too. Never mind. Right. Yeah, no. And the president is even more for, like living in the past than usual. Like he tells Phil like, oh, remember that time at the border? What a wonderful time that was. It seems like ages ago. And it was like a couple days ago. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, and he just says that about everything. He's like, oh, remember when you walked into the palace? Wow, that was a better time, wasn't it? <laughs> Man, you remember six seconds ago? Yeah, that basically, like every couple seconds he does something like that. Wow. Uh, and then he usually says, like, we'll, we'll, never, we'll never have a time like that again, will we? Or something like that. Uh, and the president also has 18 mustaches now. Oh, he grew 13. Yeah, they, they, keep, they seem to be sprouting every day. Huh. The president asks who the two hulking men are. Phil explains and asks the president if he'd like to see a demonstration of their strength. Oh boy. The president says he would. So Phil orders one of them to lift the dome off of the palace and carry it to his apartment. Wow. Yep. It's a little vague on how big and strong things and people are. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, I mean, that's surrealism. Exactly. It's a, it's a little weird. So he carries the dome to uh, Phil's shitty apartment complex yeah and then he asks them to move the north wall and then the south wall the east wall mm -hmm. and finally the west wall what about the great wall that fell down years ago now um but he Just don't make them like they used to <laughs> so he, he he so jimmy and phil have moved the entire palace yeah. to yeah. his apartment complex exactly just <laughs> phil is just playing the president hard right now 
like those uh people that actually exist who buy like monasteries and castles and things and tear them down to the bricks and then move the bricks to oh, another location yeah. and rebuild them. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. How do you mark the bricks? Very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drop any. <laughs> The president is marveled by their strength, but asks that Phil have them bring back his palace. Guys? (laughs) Guys? After all, the presidential palace is for the president. Yeah. Phil compliments the shiny presidential cravat on the president's chest. Oh. The president tells Phil that he can look at it if he promises to bring back his palace. We, We need more cravats in our world. We do. They're awesome. Yeah. So he hands the cravat over to Phil. Yeah. Who now has the presidential cravat Mm -hmm. and the palace. And then Phil just puts it on his own chest. Yep. And the president kind of realizes a little too late what's going on. (laughs) Hey. Where the man at? And he says, we're never going to have a time like that again, are we? Meaning like he's never going to be president again. Yeah. It's sad. Look, see, that's what you call a callback. Yep. To a joke that he'd been like setting up before where he was misremembering things or well, remembering things fondly that had just happened. And now he's actually remembering something fondly that's not going to happen anymore. Exactly. And, and it's, uh, it's really sad. And, yeah. um, you know, he's just kind of lost in this, in this, pro- I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the mood. He looks to his advisors and asks, are you leaving me? And they say, yes, of course he's not the president anymore. And they follow Phil, Mr. President. It's really the saddest part in the book for me. Like, it seems like it. People get fucking ripped apart and almost killed. as sad as when they dismembered. But it's like this this happy old man who's just like nice. He just he's kind of stupid, but then he just has all this ripped away from him. My handler says I'm not supposed to be president anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil and his new advisors, yeah, are off to the presidential palace for the inauguration party. Oh, nice! The oh, pre- there's a party. Do you think the president's going to be invited? Probably. I think he's the one throwing the party. I mean, the other president. Oh, that one. (laughs) No, I don't think so. Uh. The presidential palace is now just the four walls propped against Phil's shitty apartment building. Oh. And then the golden dome just kind of resting on top a little janky. Nice. While the party is in full swing, Jimmy and Vance sit in the corner listening to personalized tapes of praise made by Phil. Yo, that's awesome. They're listening to like a self-help book. Yeah, it's just Phil saying, you guys are so cool. Your muscles bulge every time you pick something up. I, You're sweet. I've been saying it for ages. Jimmy, <laughs> Vance, you got a nice bulge. And they're both so ecstatic over this new gift. Aww. They're just over there like, did you hear what he said about me? That's so wholesome. Oh my God, I'm blushing. They're just doing that like, in the corner. Phil's brain falls out again. Oh, yeah. And he begins a speech. Ooh, what's this one? He praises himself and the outer Hornerite people for being just the best damn people ever oh i've been saying it for ages it's like look guys i'm awesome but you know who else is awesome you guys are awesome look we're awesome we're all fucking awesome right yeah but you know who's not awesome whoa 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 we can't have anyone not awesome who's not awesome right you you know who's fucking not fucking awesome who's not awesome the inner goddamn hornerites i knew it i knew it I've been saying this for ages. They are such a pain in the ass. Look, you, 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 you they're feel lazy. Me? They don't do anything. They don't pay us when they need to. They're naked. Like, what an eyesore. I don't yeah. want to see that shit. Look, did you see the way they jangled and stood on top of each other? Yeah, what was that? It's fucking inhuman. Uh, so his first act as president of Ho- of Outer Horner yeah. is the Border Area Improvement Initiative. Wow. The B-I-I? <laughs> B-A-I-I? The Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin asks what that is. And Phil says, who cares? Just sign it. Yeah. Don't you trust me? No. I mean, yeah. And he really, really, really pressures his bros into just signing this thing blindly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's worked so far. And they kind of vie for his affection in how much they trust him. Because Melvin is like, well, of course I trust you. Yeah. I, I trust you twice as much as anyone would. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Melvin, Melvin. I trust him twice as much as you do. Exactly. And so Melvin's like, I trust you so much, I'm not even going to read it. And then Leon is like, but I'm going to close my eyes when I sign it. And then someone else is like, I'm going to have my back turned to the document when I sign it. I've already signed it. <laughs> and so they, they're all doing, and then, you know, Phil is like, hey, hey, whoa, whoa. You know, as long as you all keep your eyes closed, that's good enough. Just sign it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, we don't have to fight here. We're all friends. 
We're all awesome. Just as the last person signs it, which is Frida. Oh, Frida, I expected better. She's, well, yeah, she's hesitating. Yeah. And Phil is like, Frida, the fuck's up? Looking a little traitorous there. Man, man, you got a nice, I don't have any descriptor for you at all. <laughs> I assume you're wearing clothes. She's shaped like a Christmas tree. Oh. And she's half robotic and half like tree. Huh. She even mentions that one one day while she was out looking at the stars, someone decorated her by accident. That's hysterical, actually. And, uh, that's, that's really funny. And so she's self-conscious about her shape. <laughs> Interesting. But, but so he's like, like, Frida, what's up? What, what the fuck are you doing? Are you going to sign it or what? Come on, do it. We and doing this? So she does it, but she doesn't do it with her eyes closed. Oh, no. And so he's like, wow, I really thought mm. you were a team player, but mm. it looks like. I thought we were chill. Again, I have worked for some fucking manipulative people who have done this. Oh, yeah. Where they're like, man, I thought you were a team player, but you're not working overtime. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, God, fuck you. Okay. Anyways, that was, that was personal for me. Um, so <laughs> j- just as the last person signs it, they all hear shouting voices from outside. Bug carries breadcrumb. Other bugs look on in awed silence. Waters run down towards the sewer. Air continues to float around, being breathed by many. They look out and see three well-groomed men with megaphones. Hmm. Man regards strangers in street. Uh, what are you guys doing? Asked Phil. Man asks question, expects answer. (laughs) Major media figures prepare to respond. Is the media held too much accountable? One of the men explains that they're with the media. In a regular tone of voice, he's not shouting anymore. Oh, okay. And there's not much going on right now, so they're just practicing. That's hilarious. I love this. I am all about this, and I hate the media. (laughs) Phil informs them that he is the new president and invites them to the border tomorrow where he will deal with the hateful, violent criminals. Wow. The media men begin saying, New president vows to eliminate border threat. New prez to nation. You shall know peace. Exclusive series on border area struggle starts tomorrow. Wow. Don't you just hate it? If this, I, <laughs> I love the way that this is presented, but I hate what it's presenting. Yeah. They're just saying whatever shit they need to. Yeah. To be relevant. Yeah. That's all it is. Yes. The next part of the book describes a discussion between two residents of Greater Keller. Oh. A six inch wide country that encircles Outer Horner. So it's a very tiny strip along the complete edge of Outer Horner. (laughs) And they're discussing the new president and what he may be like, right? Yeah. Now, these people are very, 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 very big, but thin. So they're described as three times as tall as Jimmy and Vance. Oh, wow. And Jimmy and Vance are fucking massive compared to everybody else. Yeah. And these guys are three times as tall as them. Holy cow. But they're really, 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 really thin, right? Metabolism hasn't caught up to them yet. Uh, and they enjoy sitting around and drinking coffee. Oh. And tea. They swap okay. between those. I'm with them. Uh, and discussing at how, like, splendid their day is, right? And just how splendid things mm. are going. Smashing day, isn't it? And one of the guys is in charge of, uh, kind of rating the day at how splendid it is. Ah, this is, this is good, but it's not as good as Tuesday. Yeah. So they ask him, what's the, what's the rating for today? And he's like, oh, it's an eight out of 10, simply smashing. Uh, and they're just talking about the new president. What's he, what's he going to be like? Do you think he'll be by and talk? Do you think he's like the old president who's really nice and, you know, does yeah. stuff for us sometimes? Uh, so that's just kind of an aside. And then it comes back to what's going on in, in Horner. The inner Hornerites are shivering in the cold and feeling ashamed about what happened to Cal. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he tried to do something and they yeah. didn't do anything. They didn't, they weren't there for him when but, he needed him most. But they also just disagree with him. They're like, he was extreme. We need to. He was extreme. We, well, they, <laughs> they, they think that stern conversation is the way to go. It's worked so far. They're like, we, we shouldn't be impolite, but we need to make it very clear how we feel about polite the whole situation. Polite but firm. Polite but firm. Again, this is the, this is the, the people who are, they're, they're not bad people. They're just not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're talking to feeling miserable. They hear the presidential fanfare. And see Phil being carried on the presidential board oh, towards wow. them. 
Wait, on a board? Uh, yeah, this the previous president did this too. It's it's like it basically a carried throne, I guess. Uh, it's called no. a board in the book, but I don't know what what it's properly called. I'm picturing like you know running him out of town on a rail. Like that's what I'm picturing. You ever see your brother or though? No. There's a depiction of this. They literally take a uh, like a a railroad yeah tie and stick you on it and it like mashes your balls. Ow! And they like carry you out on it. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to usually they'll carry you to like a lynching or something like that. Oh, fuck. Yeah. No, it's not good. So they see him coming and Elmer says, you've got to be kidding me. Because <laughs> this is the first time they've seen him as the president. I'm just going to sit here and dig and dig with my <laughs> shovel. Yeah. He's just over there like <laughs> just digging slowly. <laughs> That's going to track really well for the audio listeners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which at this point is everyone. Phil does something that he's never done before. He reaches up and pulls out the bolt holding his brain in himself. What? He feels more presidential with the rush of confidence that comes with losing his brain. Oh, God. So he's like, I like this. I, I need to keep doing this. I, You know, it, it took me until now, the third time, fourth time that this has happened, to realize yeah. what's actually happening there. <laughs> And the uh, satire behind it. Right. Uh, he, he pulls out the bolt, but nothing happens. <gasps> he panics because he forgot to put in his brain last time. Oh, no. He just took it out and never put it back in. What? So he tells Jimmy and Vance to implement phase one as quickly as possible. What's phase one? In a flash, the two muscle men build a barbed wire fence around the short-term residency zone. Holy cow. With a sign that reads... Peace encouraging enclosure. Oh. That way they're not being violent and running towards the king. Yeah. Or the, the president. The president. Then came phase two. Jimmy and Vance fetch a wheelbarrow full of soil. Soil. <laughs> soil. Soil that. Uh, a wheelbarrow full of soil, an apple tree, barrels of water, and fish. Wow. They replenish the soil in inner horner replace the tree that they had removed, and create a bigger stream for the fish to live in. What? Phil then declares that they are reclaiming their ancient ancestral land. Oh. Because, after all, it belongs to them. Just when you thought things were going good. <laughs> nope. He's like, you know what? That land probably belonged to us originally, so we're just going to take it back. And if it didn't, who's going to stop us? Exactly. This whole time, the media guys are there yelling. Yeah. Prez transforms violent muddy hole into pastoral paradise. Peace achieved at problematic border area. Visionary leader dazzles nation with decisive greatness. And so on. Hate. <laughs> it's the best thing. It's hysterical. And I hate it. Then Phil reminisces about his childhood before his father left. Oh, you remember when? It's not exactly reminisce. That's not the right word. It's more like he remembers things that happened and it just irks him. Look, it was a different time, all right? Now we're fixing those problems. There's a story about him and his father having a picnic at the border. Oh. When he was very young. Yeah. And his father was throwing stones at one of the inner Hornerites. And, you good for nothing. And then one of the stones goes into an orifice of some kind. And the Hornerite is like, hey, what the fuck? And then he calls a border guard. Yeah. And the border guard is like, dude, I'm going to have to write you up for that. You're harassing the inner Hornerites. That's against the law. Yeah. Why would you do that? Phil, thinking about this, is mentally defending his father. He's like, look, he was just playing around. Yeah. It was nothing. Didn't, it was just a prank, bro. Yeah. And, uh, and soon after this incident, his father leaves and he never sees him again. Oh. And so he blames the inner Hornerites for his father abandoning him. Yeah, it's their fault. He went to go get cigarettes in inner Horner and never came back. So at this point, Phil's speech is starting to get affected by him not having a brain for so long. Sure. He's saying the wrong words constantly. He's trying to communicate with his subordinates. And they're like, what the, what's going on with him? What's, uh, what's up? Now it was time for phase three. Oh, no. Phil proclaims that as long as the inner Hornerites exist... Peace would be impossible. Yeah. You, there's because no working with people like that. They're, yeah, they're just so inherently violent. You just can't do anything with them, right? You try and you try, but they just refuse. So there's only one solution. The final solution? You have to get rid of them. Yep. Forever. For every problem, there's a final solution. Frida thinks about her daughter, and she can't in good conscience stand by and watch this happen. She protests, but no one backs her up. I protest. She, she's alone in this. And so 
she is consequently disassembled as oh. a traitor. Oh, no. Right. Phil warns the others that that's just what happens to traitors. Look, we can't help it. It's her fault. Yeah, talk shit. I never trusted her anyway. She had her eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like he does bring that up. I, I know. You, you, he's like, you had your eyes open, so I'm not surprised. We're just going to fuck, just disassemble you. <sighs> Phil begins to spasm at this point. Oh. He's starting to lose bodily control. Wow. He needed to hurry. Two more inner Hornerites are disassembled. Oh. But just then... Dale, one of the residents of Greater Keller, yeah, runs out from behind a building where he was hiding and starts sprinting to the border to his own country. Oh, because he saw what was going down. He seen some shit. Yeah, he was spying there. He has a look of shock and disgust on his face. I don't know why, but I was going to say sh- there's shock and awe. Shock and awe. Shock and awe. It's not really awe. It's more like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. They're killing people. Shock and bruh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, when Dale gets back to the others in his country, he relays what he witnessed. Um, they're all, of course, shocked and appalled by this. Yeah. And they argue about whether they should do something or not. Should we or shouldn't we? Should I stay or should I go? I need to stop doing music references. In, in the end, they decide that if this is going on the country and they know about it, yep. they cannot have a splendid day. Oh, because they, they know this stuff is going down. Yeah, yeah. Look, you just, you ruined Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday was great. It wasn't as good as Tuesday, but it was still going fine. But now we know better. We know some stuff's going down. That just really puts a damper on it. The coffee just doesn't taste the same. No, it doesn't. The coffee tastes like people getting disassembled. Which, to me, is like, because their argument is very, very, very much like what we saw around COVID lockdowns. Mm-hmm. Which was like, we need a lockdown. And some people are like, you're going to ruin the economy. Which is kind of what they were arguing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. we, we can't get involved. We might ruin our own good time. One of, my, one of my favorite things that came out of that, which I think is just funny, whichever side of the fence you're on, mm-hmm. is the image of the dinosaurs seeing the meteor. Yes. And it says, oh no, the economy. Yeah, that's, that's, a, great, that's a great one. Oh, it's hilarious. Um, but so they're, 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 they're arguing here. Yeah. Uh, and... and Jimmy and Vince are continuing the disassemblies, and just as they are about to disassemble the last remaining inner Hornrights, there's four of them left. Mm -hmm. Is Elmer one of them? I think so. Oh, good. I'm pretty sure he survived. I'm rooting for Elmer and Larry. I I, I ship them. Larry's a bad guy. Well, Maybe not in the end. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, So they're about to get disassembled by the big guys. Yeah. And then the expeditionary force of the nation of Greater Keller arrives at the border area. Expeditionary force of the great of the nation of Greater Keller. Yeah, that's not an acronym. So they no, but they uh, so they at some point came to a decision that they needed to intervene here. They're they're fucking the UN. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, except the UN doesn't fucking do, whatever. They're NATO. Sure. Is that a thing? Uh, NATO's a thing. I get. Oh, I, <laughs> I I don't know. Look, <laughs> look, it's fine. Okay, let's move on. Uh, there's a great line about how. Uh, I think it was one of the greater Keller people was like, and and Dave, I, you need to go fill five thermoses with coffee for this expedition. Yeah. Look, we got to prepare. <laughs> you got to have that coffee. So they arrive at the border area. And since they are so much larger than Jimmy and Vance. Yeah. The boys lose their chill and they rip off their uniforms and just take off. Bye. They strip. Uh, yeah, well, they had these special shirts. They oh, wore, okay. So they just took off the shirts, and they're like, "Fuck this shit, I'm out!" And they took it off. It's a great song. Phil's condition has been steadily worsening here. He gets to the point where he collapses. Oh man, he, he can't like hold up the rack anymore. It's too heavy. It's not my- <laughs> I didn't say hold up Iraq. I no, said hold no, up not Iraq. Iraq. Not Iraq. Not Iraq. Okay. The rack, but it's also a phrase for tits. <laughs> You're right. I didn't think about that a single time. Oh my God. I I have been trying so hard to not make that joke. And then you just put it right there with how heavy they are. I I can't believe. uh, Usually I'm the one that points out. I know. References. I know. And I'm just like, I, I, man, I didn't, I didn't think about that the whole time I was reading this book. Not even once. It is phrased in completely different context. Right. It's sounds like a coat rack. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was thought. Yeah. So his head is kind of lolling because he's, he's growing weak. Yeah. And he's just saying like gibberish and just spasming. He has like tremors. Uh, Larry asks if he's okay. 
Oh, nice guy, Larry. See, yeah. he's just concerned for people. Really? He just, he likes, he loves people. Yeah. He's a people person. Exactly. That's why he's <laughs> persecuting the Jews hey, in Auschwitz. Hey, he's not. <laughs> okay. He's not. All right. We haven't seen him do anything. Uh, I mean. He's there. He only defended his homeland. That is literally yeah, all he's done. Exactly. So, I, okay. Look, fair orders, enough. right? Orders are orders. Yeah. So, uh, Phil kind of walks forward and slumps over the barbed wire fence. Oh, that's not great. And there's one final spark, and he lays still. Oh. He went too long without his brain. Man, it'll get you. Mistakes were made, said Larry. (laughs) We, uh, we fucked up. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's such a great moment. The second the leader is dead, he's like, Okay, maybe we shouldn't have done some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The citizens of Greater Keller tear down the fence and free the inner Hornerites. Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down that wall. They tell the outer Hornerites to cut this shit out and return to their country. Yeah. It's like, stop imprisoning your fellow countrymen, even though they're technically not, but whatever. Just get, you know, stop. Uh, and so they all leave. They go back to their small ring country around the, you know, Greater Keller. I told him this would happen, said one of the advisors. So did I, said another. Did you? No, they didn't. No, I know. And they kind of walk off talking about how, how uh, you know, they, just, they did all they could, but the guy was just insane, wouldn't listen to anybody. Well, now they're, they're just bouncing their opinions off themselves. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm with it. See? I get it. <laughs> it's brilliant. You dangle a thinly veiled metaphor in front of me, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see right through it. Like sheer curtains. Those uh, are the curtains that we were talking about in turn of the screw that you can curtains. see through. Mm-hmm. They're sheer. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Somebody uh, uh, corrected us on that. Well, somebody answered our question that we asked. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know who you are. Uh, so the media start yelling again and they say, <laughs> I love these guys, but I hate them. How was the nation so easily duped? Why did nation ignore repeated warnings by media? Did you get that? Yeah. The media warned them. But they didn't. I know. <laughs> I, I, because the media was duped as well. Yeah, exactly. And the media presented well, the same information. I don't think they were duped. They just didn't give a fuck. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they just, look, whatever the news is. That's as long what as we, you classify it as entertainment journalism yeah. or uh, or object, uh, uh, opinionated journalism, yeah, then I, you can say whatever you want. I think one of, one of these guys is Keemstar. One of them is. <laughs> Maybe. Once the advisors in the media left, the inner Hornerites realized that They outnumbered the Outer Hornerites suddenly. (gasps) They, still naked, jumped on them and tore them apart. Wow. Mm -hmm. Even Larry? They tore apart Larry. (laughs) Oh. Elmer, no. They were like, it's time for some motherfucking payback, bitch. I shipped Larmer. (laughs) (laughs) Or Elmy? I like Elmy. Elmy is pretty good. Elmy's pretty... Larmer was so much harder uh, to say. Or, or, or... uh, Fucking Larima? L- Larima or El Murray, El Murray, El Murray. I am El Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, from out of the sky, a gigantic hand descends. This hand has a lake in its palm and a vegetable garden on its wrist. What? The hand is holding a giant spray can that puts all the people to sleep. Another hand descends, and the two hands gently disassemble all the bodies. Then. Using all of the mixed parts, the hands create 15 new people that they're made up of parts from the inner and the outers. Wow. So there is no inner or outer anymore. Now they are, they are one. The only parts that were not used were Phil's. Oh. Then the hands retrieve Phil's brain from his shitty apartment where he had left it because that was the last place where it fell out was yeah. his apartment. It had rolled under a couch. That's why he didn't oh. put it back in. Yeah. So the hands retrieve his, his uh, brain and they toss it into the stream where the fish ate it. Oh, wow. Yep. And his body was mounted on a platform with a sign that reads, Phil, monster. A giant pair of lips poke out of the clouds and they whispered, this time, be kind to one another. Oh, the hands removed the fences and boundary strings that are placed, you know, around the boundaries of the countries. Yeah. And then placed a new sign that reads, Welcome to New Horner. Aww. The hands then dust themselves off, so kind of a, that thing, and ascend back into the clouds. Soon all of the newly assembled people wake up, 
knowing nothing. But they all have little name tags, so they at least know their names. Oh, nice. So they all wake up, and they're like, I guess my name is is Susan, because that's what the tag says. Oh, nice to meet you, Susan. They look around, and they start interacting with each other, like, oh, this place seems nice. Yeah. You want to go do something? Sure, let's go do something. They all look at the black pile of scrap on the platform. What is that? One of them asks. It's a fill. What's a fill? A monster, apparently. Hmm. The end. Hmm. 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 <laughs> That's incredible. It's, a, it's fucking amazing. That is a hysterical and absolutely astounding book. Yeah. I am so glad that you read it. I love it. And there's there's a ton of flavor text and details that I didn't bring there up. There always is. But it's one of the funniest books I've ever read, I think. It's 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 very, very, very thinly veiled metaphor. It's like Douglas Adams meets 1984. Right. No, it's very, um, I mean, uh, it's, it's pretty, like, cynical. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah which I am very cynical, so I relate to everything in this book. Yes. Uh, I thought the king was my absolute favorite character. The president. I keep saying king. You do. Because it's a palace. He's treated like a king. Yeah. But the president, the president of Outer Horner is like the best character. He's my favorite. Um, Phil is a very believable person. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's just out of spite is just seizing power and getting rid of people he has biases against. Yep. All of the people only listen to him because he fed into their biases. Right. And he's like, oh, look, look how they're acting. See, yeah. I'm right. You're right. They're lesser people than us. So right, that exactly. justifies everything we're doing. Exactly. It's, it, this book can be applied to literally any age, any time. Oh, yeah. In yeah, any, no, this, any political system. This is uh, more a commentary on humanity than it is exactly. on any particular country. Although. Yeah, it's it's almost like uh, like Animal Farm. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just yeah. a timeless like this is just how people are. We're just shitty to each other. Yeah, um, but at the same time, it's like there's no uh, the only real good good people to root for are the greater Keller people that are the right other the edge. coffee and tea drinkers who are yeah. rate the day right. They, but like yeah. even like our quote unquote heroes who are stuck in inner horner they didn't really do anything no they were so inactive and it and it's it's like that saying where the only thing required for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing right it's like that's exactly what they are they're good people that are doing nothing right and uh and it's it's just relatable and it's frustrating and i love it I mean, it's that whole, uh, on both sides of the fence too, it's that societal bias, right? Like people look yeah. to the people around them to see what the quote unquote right thing to do is mm-hmm. based on what everyone else is doing. So you have the inner horn, horn nurse who I want to say the Hornberg, which is the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Helms deep, right? Exactly. The, the Hornberg, um, the inner horners who are confirming their societal bias of not, not rebelling. Mm-hmm. And then you have the outer horners who are confirming their societal bias of how evil the inner Hornberg horners are. Right. And they're just reinforcing those negative opinions of each other uh, in this circle of hate. Right. Exactly. And then you have you have the advisors who only tell you what you want to hear. Right. Right. <laughs> don't don't actually uh, <clears throat> have a strategy or opinion of their own. Right. You have the media, which is <laughs> just shouting whatever will get them the necessary whatever attention. Whatever it is, we're right and we're getting views. Whatever right. it is, we're right and we're getting views. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's so depressingly accurate. And then you have poor, poor people like Jimmy and Vance who yeah. have like the these talents that are being exploited because they come from such a terrible background. Like all they wanted was compliments. They didn't even it's, want to be paid initially. It's, uh, there's a, there's a term, it's relative something. Um, I can't remember the exact term for it, but it's, uh, it's the same philosophy as, um, me saying you have broken the law, Mm -hmm. right? For some, for, for sitting in that chair that you're in, that's, you've broken the law. I'm going to fine you a hundred thousand dollars. Right. And you say, that's absurd. I didn't know this was a law. This is my first offense. And I say, well, okay, in this case, I am going to only fine you (laughs) $10,000. Still absurd, but relative to the $100,000, you feel like you're getting at least a let off easy because you're not paying $100,000 when that is a situation that I put in your mind in the first place. Right. Yeah. So they, they were absolutely exploited and manipulated. And I, I, I feel like they were just, uh, 
Because we don't get any morality from them at all. Yeah, they they just do what they're told. That's just their job. Yeah, yeah. So and they just do it. Yeah. Um. And then the only emotional thing is them being happy at being complimented, and then being scared when the big guys actually show up. Right. Right. So I, I'm I'm not exactly sure what that parallel is, but I guess it's just people who are for that capitalist mindset where it's it's like i'm i'm just a temporarily embarrassed millionaire yeah it's it's just the grind right well, and it's and it's the same thing too where as soon as the source of the influence dries up right the compliments yeah. stop because the guy's not there anymore then the reason that they have for doing what they're doing is gone right so they're 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 in it for the money for yeah. the what they're getting out of it yeah. they don't they're they're ambivalent towards what's actually happening. exactly they don't believe one way or the other they're just there yeah. to do their job yeah so there's like a there's like a, a million things you can yeah. you can draw from this book yeah at the end of every episode of this show the person who read the book must give the book a rating our rating system consists of five levels toilet paper which is the book is only worth the physical material it's made out of shampoo bottle it's better than nothing ikea manual it's competent but not entertaining or vice versa it could be really entertaining but, but not competent yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 uh a kindle pick which is worth buying electronically and or discounted and then a hardcover, which is an instant classic. So, Smokey the Bear, what is your rating for the short and terrible reign of Phil? The, <laughs> the brief but frightening reign of Phil. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was wrong, but man, it was close. Uh, I, I, you probably guessed I'm giving this a hardcover. I think okay. it, is, it is a modern classic. It is fantastic. I can't believe I've never heard of it before, uh, before I actually did hear of it. Right. Which was like a month ago <laughs> but i would recommend it to everybody this is the kind of book i think should be read in high school yeah like yeah. it's just one of those books it's yeah like, you, like you animal know, farm or yeah. most high schools claim to read 1984 even though most people don't right um, i haven't read that one yeah sorry yeah it happens <laughs> but uh no i th- yeah i recommend this to like everyone uh, and, and it's, it's really easy to read. It sounded very digestible. Yeah. It's very, it's short. It's super easy to read. This is probably the easiest book I've read for this show. Like nice. I zoomed through this book Yeah, and I enjoyed it all the way. So I'm sure that contributed to how quick it felt. That, right? that definitely, definitely, definitely helps. Yeah. But it's like, it's really creative. It's really, really funny. Um, there's a whole bit about the people from greater Keller that I didn't go into, but they, they basically, all they do is like walk in a circle oh, nice. in their land. Yeah. So as a result, their bodies are kind of curved <laughs> to like suit that. Interesting. And, uh, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a really, really fun book. And I, I highly recommend it. It's a hardcover. Hardcover. It was, it was very, very entertaining to listen to. That's why I yeah. think, I think I said it partway through, but, um, it was hard to find actual, reactions and jokes in there because the book itself is so it's funny just, yeah it's just funny. and it's just a good a good story yeah um and sometimes those are really easy to find things that, like the turn of the screw was a great story but it was there's a lot of content it's in there to, to riff off of but yeah um but yeah the, this this was incredible this was a lot of fun i i really enjoyed reading and summarizing this book. yeah yeah exactly if you want to support this show you can find us on patreon.com slash a page too far we have bonus episodes that go up each month. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also starting to do, we, we did one for October, a, a movie commentary, yeah. and we enjoyed it so much. We're just going to keep throwing those up there as well. Uh, so. Yeah, they're like super easy, so yeah. we'll just probably just do that every yeah, month. Just now. record one, slap it together, boom, done. Yeah, um, they're, they're just a lot of fun. So if you want to hear us uh, ramble on during a movie, by all <laughs> means, go for it. Um, if you want to contact us, you can find us at a page too far at gmail.com. Uh, we've gotten several letters here um, that we're going to be kind of working through a little bit Mm -hmm. um if you want it read on air let us know if you want it to remain anonymous let us know if you don't want it read just want to tell us something let us know uh we have uh twitter and instagram which are both at a page too far Mm -hmm. and we just recently thanks to even more work on your part launched a youtube channel (laughs) yep so it's a little bit more accessible um it's easier to share with friends if you could just post a link to a youtube video I i think that'll help Plus, we have the algorithm kind of helping us out. Our Scientology episode already has like almost that's, 20 views. That's our most popular episode on both platforms, which is audio and. Yeah, uh, it, it's bizarre on YouTube, YouTube, though, because like I tried searching it and it wouldn't come up. So I don't know how the fuck people are getting. To Interesting. It. I don't. Uh, maybe it, just com- it comes up in a suggestion bar or something. A it lot. could be. Yeah. But uh, this, I mean, good news for us. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We have a lot of fun doing this and, and we want to find more ways 
to make it accessible. So if you have if you have any suggestions on that line, let us know. Um, not everything is available, but you know, let us know how you want to listen, and we'll we'll see what we can do about that. Right. But this YouTube channel is uh, is something we're just going to post the episodes when they air. Maybe there'll be a little bit of a delay. Maybe there won't. We kind of haven't worked out the logistics on the, that. But. Yeah, YouTube is going to be secondary, definitely. But yeah. uh, we're going to try to keep it up with the main because it's 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 very easy to to put together the video yeah, for that. Exactly. So, uh, like I've already got the templates out, so I just have to slap them together, render it, and that takes an hour. Upload it, and then bam, it's done. Exactly. So uh, we'll be doing that. And we it we don't have an official URL yet for YouTube, so we have a channel right. link uh, that you can find in the description of the episodes. Um, or you can search a page too far and we, we come up there. It does come up in a search. Yeah. Yep. Search a page too far, uh, or follow the link in any of the, uh, uh, podcasting apps. The descriptions are all in there or, um, we post them on Twitter and Patreon as well. Uh, and Instagram. Thank you editors. Thanks to our editors. We love our editors. Um, hashtag Bobo. We kind of let that slack for a couple episodes. I think we did. Yeah. Hashtag Bobo lives. Yeah. Hashtag Bobo lives. And then hashtag more cravats. More <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hashtag more cravats. We should get a cravat to put on the. We should shelf. get a cravat to put on there. We need to find a nice one. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice one. Cravats and ascots. I'm I'm for both of those. <laughs> ascots are so hot though. They are. Well, I mean, yeah. Like Ugh. anything you put around a collar is going to be a little warm. Yeah. Cravats are also hot. Hey. Uh.